Alright, welcome to another update on the tropics. And uh, I think uh, this morning or into the night, we have seen Marco uh, forming there as well with uh, Laura, which has, um, which, which has uh, weakened slightly to 40 mile per hour, uh, down, pretty much down to 40 mile per hour from 45 mile per hour. So some slight weakening there, but you know it is expected as it is interacting with some um, land. Marco, though, is absolutely blowing up. Uh, we've seen this pass from tropical depression to 45 mile per hour and then to 50 and now to 65 mile per hour. A National Hurricane Center is saying that Marco is strengthening quickly and it forecast to become a hurricane later today. Uh, so we've see, we're seeing very uh, fast strengthening with both of those with this system in particular. But Laura is bringing heavy rains to portion of Puerto Rico, and other than that, it seems to be it. Uh, so, uh, what else? Sorry, my my computer's a little bit. Uh, so now let's first off look at Marco, and then we'll have a look at Laura because Marco seems to be the main threat right now. So here's a current track from the National Hurricane Center for Marco. Um, as you can see, it was able to miss uh, Mexico there, thankfully. Uh, we saw this moving a little bit like this, and uh, the, the National Hurricane Center called for this to make landfall in Mexico. And that did not happen because it went significantly more north. And now we do have tropical warnings for both Cuba and the Gulf of Mexico here. So uh, the track calls for this to become a hurricane uh, in the next, by probably by tonight, and then heading towards Louisiana, curving slightly and making a landfall in Mexico, but really impacting most of the Louisiana and coast of Mexico there, uh, where we could also be seeing impacts with Laura as it comes towards Louisiana as well. Uh, so really, we're going to have to see. I personally don't think, I, I mean, I personally think uh, the stronger it gets, as you know, the more towards Mississippi, Alabama it could go. Uh, but, you know, we'll see how it also interacts with this trough here, which we'll talk about later. But right now, National Hurricane Center is forecasting this to be an 85-mile-per-hour hurricane here before weakening to a tropical storm. So maybe we see a Category 2 hurricane with this. That's still not out of the question. Uh, here's what it's been looking like uh, in the last couple of hours. Um, uh, so we're seeing a new uh, convection blow up happening with this system here. And uh, it's actually, you know, it seems like the center is going to be moving potentially over uh, Cuba there, uh, moving a little bit farther to the east than originally anticipated. National Hurricane Center has a center around here, but it looks like uh, it, it might be moving a little bit further east than anticipated. But either way, uh, impacts are looking like severely, severe, severe impacts are starting to happen uh, to parts of Cuba. And we're now also seeing this new blow up of convection here. Uh, which could become the new uh, center of convection there. So, but other than that, we can see the bands here. We have a uh, some south uh, southerly band, a maybe some north band coming. Uh, so you know it's looking fairly well. There's also indications of an eye wall on radar forming. So overall, the center, it, the the system is strengthening uh, pretty good right now. Uh, here's the intensity, uh, or not the intensity, here's the tracks, and we've seen this burst out so much. Now, uh, a couple models bring it closer to the Florida Panhandle. Uh, some of the models are bringing it to Texas. Uh, so, really, we're seeing this, like, it seems to be getting more and more uncertain uh, whether it makes landfall in Texas or it makes landfall in Louisiana, but still, most models do bring it uh, a little bit like this and curve it towards Texas, which seems to be what will happen for now. But with those new models starting to maybe sp spare us out and the center maybe being more easy than anticipated, we might see another shift towards the northeast there, uh, which could impact more land. And, you know, we're going to have to see if that's going to happen or not. But right now, I do expect this to uh, potentially make landfall in Louisiana and then kind of curve towards Texas there. Seems to be a little bit likely. Uh, intensity guidance, we've also seen a shift toward a little bit of a stronger storm. Most models didn't anticipate it to strengthen that fast, but now a lot of models are bringing it toward Cat 1 status. Uh, three models bring it to Category 2, but, uh, you know, as you can see, most models are starting to bring it to Cat 1. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, uh, at least 50, uh, a lot of models do bring it to Category 1, if not 50% of the models. Uh, so we're likely going to be seeing this become a hurricane. 
uh, with how it's been strengthening right now. So a uh, hurricane is likely with this system. Now quickly, I just want to show you guys what Recon found from this system. Uh, on its last pass, they did find 90, 992 millibars there. Uh, so, you know, it's strengthening really rapidly from 998 to 995 and now to 992. Uh, so we could soon see this dip into the 980s. Uh, but they've been finding close to, uh, around 65, close to hurricane force winds uh, around the center here. But as you can see, the tropical storm force winds uh, extend farther uh, east. But on the west side, we have pretty much no strong winds whatsoever uh, but we do have you know tropical storm force winds extending up uh, a little bit like this now so again uh, it looks like it's going to be doing another pass through the center there but it's it's dropping 998 995 992 and i wouldn't be surprised if they find like 990 or 989 uh in the next pass there uh that wouldn't be too surprising from this system uh, so that there's definitely a chance for that to happen, and you know as you can see, uh, yeah, not close to 9.95 there, nine or yeah, and uh, the MSLPs, which is also the winds there, uh, it is staying, you know, at around, you know, we we saw the winds at around 50 knots uh, near the center, and then surface winds. Uh, we saw also around 50 knots near around the center there. So uh, it's definitely at least 60, at least 50 mile per hour there. Uh, and I wouldn't be surprised if they find stronger winds out they do a little pass through the center there. Okay, so now on to Tropical Storm Laura, which has weakened, but uh, it has a pretty massive, pretty big wind field now. Uh, expanding there uh, ever so slightly. Puerto Rico is getting impacted with the strap of some force winds, and the new track calls for this to go through the Dominican Republic, through Cuba. So I don't know how it's going to be able to survive through all this land here, uh, especially Dominican Republic, which could tear the entire system apart. Uh, but there's still a chance maybe it does this, and <laughs> some people are saying maybe... It could just slip through the little hole there. Uh, so maybe it does that, but very unlikely. And they're calling for an 85 mile per hour landfall as well in Louisiana. Now, what would be interesting to see uh, is when uh, Laura is right here, Marco will be around here. So that's going to be interesting to see how they do interact with each other. And then when Marco is around here, I think Laura is going to be around there. So really, this is really going to be interesting because they could, we could have the, uh, I don't know how you call it, but the Fijuara effect uh, from those systems. But other than that, we do have tropical storm warnings for most of Puerto Rico, Dominican Republic, tropical storm watches for Cuba, and warnings and watches in place for the Bahamas as well. Here's a look at what Laura's been looking at, really looking a whole lot better every time. Uh, really, really strengthening. I, I mean, in my opinion, I think it's now higher than 40, but we still haven't got a recon play in it. But uh, we can see some new convection popping up here, and it's really, I think it's stronger than 40 mile per hour. But you can see the center here moving uh, uh, south of Puerto Rico, and it's really interesting because I really thought it would go north of Puerto Rico, and now we're seeing this go south of Puerto Rico. So, quite a big change, but lots of convection through the system, looking fairly organized. Uh, it's looking pretty good, in my opinion. You know, Marco Marco has less convection than this. It's looking, you know, fairly well, and I wouldn't be surprised if it's at least 50 mile per hour. I mean, I think it's way more than 40 mile per hour. I think it's probably on the 50 mile per hour, if not higher. So, uh, I think we really need a recon to go in there, but they're still estimating it to be 40 mile per hour. So, we'll see by tonight if we do get a recon going in there. Uh, and hence, our trap or the, the the spaghetti models have also spread out like for Marco. So now, one spaghetti models brings it into Florida, and then the rest kind of brings it into Louisiana, and then three brings it into Texas. Now, once again, what's going to be interesting is that this is the track for Marco. So it's really going to be interesting how it's going to be interacting with Flora coming through there. And uh, you know, as you know, Marco's going to be around here. Uh, and Laura's going to be down there. So really, depending on how strong they be, uh, we could have the Fijuara effect or whatever it's called. Or they could kind of absorb each other or even kill each other. So really, it's going to be interesting uh, to see how that does spread out. But uh, we'll see. It's it's Laura is pretty hard to predict at the moment. So, you know, the cone is rather big. 
takes pretty much the whole gulf there. So uh, right now, uh, I do see this making a landfall. I mean, I don't see this making a landfall in Louisiana, to be honest. I think it's going to more go more to the east, maybe like this. But really, it's going to depend how strong the, the high-pressure ridge is. So we're going to be going to be able to see that. Here's a look at the intensity guidance here. And now most models only bring it to maybe slight cat once to slight cat what cat one status in 84 hours. Uh, and if we compare that 84 hours, it would be uh, around in the middle of its journey through the Gulf. Uh, so yeah, it looks like it might only be a a, a slight cat one. Uh, two mo three models bring it to cat two still to the category three and one to category four. But right now, I don't see this strengthening a whole lot. Maybe when it gets into the Gulf, though. Okay, now on to really quickly uh, the dry air. So Marco is right here. No dry air whatsoever for Marco. And that's the same thing there. Uh, and, you know, as you can see, Laura looks a little bit better than Marco there. But uh, Laura has a little bit of dry air here trying to get in. But very almost no dry air. It does have some dry around it, but shouldn't be affecting it so much. So both of the systems are in extremely favorable conditions there uh, for development. So nothing that's holding them back except land interaction uh, for Laura there, which could interact with all the slam. Um, now let's have a look at the wind shear. And once again, Laura is fine with wind shear. It has no wind shear to deal with through its journey uh, through the Caribbean there. And honestly, I think there's a chance it could go south of all the islands. Uh, so that would be interesting to see what happened. On the other hand, Marco could be dealing with 25 to 30 knots of shear soon because the entire Gulf has a whole lot of shear uh, because of this trough here that we've been talking about, which is really going to be, is that going to be weakening the storm or not with, you know, there's some dry air uh, and wind shear with this uh, trough here. But it's it's moving away from the Gulf currently. But either way, it's going to be bringing some pretty significant wind shear here to the system so we're really gonna have to see if it's able to hold off with that strong wind shear there um so really it's it's gonna be i mean it's probably gonna be helpful to hold itself but it's it's gonna be something we're gonna have to uh check day to day uh so now really quickly we're gonna have a look at the models uh so gfs as we know it's been very very inconsistent and gfs shows only a 999 landfall, and if we know it, it already has that 993 millibars, so we know that's not going to be happening. And it shows Laura uh, really not doing a whole lot much. So I think right now that, that we can know for sure that uh, that probably the GFS is a little, a little bit wrong with this. Uh, in terms of the CMC, um, as I've been saying, that... The CMC also looks to be underestimating, uh, uh, what is it called? Underestimating Marco, showing a thousand six millibars in six hours, where it already has nine ninety three millibars. Uh, but in terms of for Laura, it seems Laura is, is possible with a nine eighty nine landfall in Louisiana. So that is something that's possible. But really, CMC is also underestimating both of those some quite significantly. Uh, the Navgem, um, let's see what the Navgem shows. I don't know why, you know, most models really are completely underestimating Marco right now. Once again, Marco does have a way, way, way lower pressure. Uh, but it does show going straight north to Louisiana there, which is a possibility as it gets stronger. Uh, but, you know, it has 993 millibars already. So if when it would make life fall, I think it would be higher than 991 millibars there, and then it also shows Laura pretty much going into an open wave. But if we track where they show Laura going, uh, they actually show it going a little bit like this. If you look closely there, uh, you can see the area of clouds does move onto eastern Florida, which, like I said, is still not out of the possibility. Uh, it, it's still a possibility, but it's getting more and more unlikely. So right now, GFS, CMC, Navgem, all of them uh, are already wrong, pretty much, because we already know Marco is stronger than that. Once again, Marco has wins, uh, has pressure 993 millibars, so already that's wrong, and it already only shows a 1,005 landfall. So once again, we're pretty certain that that will happen. And then it shows a 990... 984 
landfall in Louisiana. Now, Laura's tracks are still possible for each of those models. And then lastly, we'll look at the European model because right now every model is just depressing. And they're probably all drunk. Uh, but anyways, they show both of those system making landfall near Louisiana. Uh, and once again, they're probably underestimating both of those systems there. Um, and yeah, they are once again showing Mark only being a thousand ton millibars and making a 999 landfall. And then, um, and then Laura making a thousand four millibars. So, I mean, I don't know what to clean you guys, uh, what to tell you guys with all those models, but you know, it's really, I mean, when we get any models run, but the models have just not been very consistent this year and they've all really been underestimating, uh, everything really but recon did is now finding winds of around 64 knots on the center but it is flagged so maybe they there's something wrong with that but uh they just did another center pass so we'll see what winds they do get from that center pass there or what pressure it looks like well, they might have got it lower than last time once again maybe around 990 Maybe around 992, 990, maybe around, this, around the same as last time, I think. Maybe a little bit lower, maybe 991. Maybe, uh, yeah, I think we, they got uh, about the same as last time. Uh, so that's going to be ending this video. Thanks, you guys, for watching. And once again, Mark and Laura could be a uh, pretty major impact to the Gulf Coast. Louisiana could get hit by both of those systems. Uh, so we're really going to need to watch out for that.